it's second from bottom against second from top and there is so much at stake for both these teams in a fixture that usually lives up to its billing. Well, Hart's victory over Dundee United last week was their first since beating Celtic here in December. There's one change from the Tannadice team with fit again Gary Locke replacing Grant Murray. Colin Cameron has made quite an impact on his return to action. He's on painkillers though to stifle the pelvic problem that kept him out for most of the season. Gary McSwiggan has scored four goals in the last two games, so he's raring to go, as of course is former Celt Darren Jackson. Yeah, no surprise to me that Jim Jeffries chooses to go with the same formation that was good enough to take the points at uh, Tannadice. I think tonight we'll see Paul Ritchie be given a, a man-marking job on Henrik Larsson. This young man, one of the sharpest in the business, very good at uh, going head-to-head -head with uh, opposition forwards. I'm pretty sure he'll be given that role tonight when Larsson comes into the last third of the pitch. And like Charlie, I do think that this young man here will be absolutely crucial to Hart's chances tonight. Well short of fitness, but Jim Jeffries will be asking him to get himself forward as often as possible. I don't think I'll have to worry too much about uh, what happens when Hearts lose the ball. Gary Locke can always tuck in here and give him a little bit of insurance in that department. And again, Darren Jackson playing against his old club. And for me, playing in his best position in the hole, just off the front. I heard Charlie say that Paul Lambert may be given the job on Colin Cameron. It wouldn't surprise me if Paul Lambert is asked, asked to pick up Darren Jackson tonight. Celtic are still without the suspended Johan Mjalby, but the versatile Vidar reset is back from a ban and he's been given what's becoming a familiar defensive role because Stefan Mahi is injured, as are the likes of Stubbs, Reaper and Maratchik, while Simon Donnelly is struggling with a virus. Mark Viduka has overcome the illness that forced him off in Saturday's Cup semi. As for Henrik Larsson, English Premiership clubs can look, but they can't touch after he agreed a new deal to stay in Scotland. Yeah, similar system to Hearts, it's a, a basic 3-5-2 system. I think they will need the insurance here of Tom Boyd's pace. Gary McSwegan on fire at the moment, one of the quickest in the business. So Tommy Boyd's uh, pace will come in handy tonight. But it's a midfield three, I think, that are cru crucial to Celtic these days. Burley's still a bit short of fitness, but like Colin Cameron, he'll drive into all sorts of areas and try and time his runs into the box. Lambert will probably pick up Darren Jackson and Blinken, I think, starting to look the player we thought he might be when he arrived in Glasgow looks a far more confident player since he was moved from wide left a step in gives him far more options but the real question tonight is what the hearts do with this man simply the best player in scotland right now he'll drop off the front he'll lead the line and he is the big problem for jim jeffrey's side tonight we can expect both teams to entertain and to excite but who will excel on a telling night in the scottish premier league it's Rangers against them firmly at Ibrox. It's hard to be Celtic here. An evening when destinies could be decided in the race for the title and in the fight for survival. This is a tight, compact stadium. And that simply adds to the atmosphere. Hearts have saved their best for these Sky Sports cameras this season. As you heard Jim Jeffries saying, they've beaten both Rangers and Celtic in thrilling encounters. Celtic though unbeaten in the 16 games that have followed since their 2-1 defeat here in December and they've won 13 of those 16 matches. At this stage of the season defeat is unthinkable for both these teams. Celtic still playing catch up with Rangers at the top. Hearts scrapping for survival at the bottom. Well, a few years ago, this was a sight the Hearts fans never thought they'd see. Darren Jackson was the bane of their lives when playing for Edinburgh rivals Hibs, but he's quickly won over the Jambos, who see him as the man to mend their broken hearts. Jackson quickly faces his former club, having only left Celtic last month. Just another game, he says. I, for one, don't believe him. Anyone with an allegiance to the hoops, our cocker hoop at the moment, after Henrik Larsson signed a new four-year contract yesterday. Larsson's magnificent 37-goal tally this season includes a hat-trick against Hearts, so they have good reason to dread the dreadlocks. It's the Super Swedes 90th appearance for Celtic tonight. His overall return of 56 goals doesn't really say it all, because he's created quite a few too. Celtic 
form their intimidating huddle. It's the fourth and final meeting between the teams this season so far. We've had a Hearts win, a Celtic win and a draw. So something's got to give at Tynecastle tonight. Hearts will start what should be a cracking contest because it always is when these two come together. Gary Locke missed the win at Dundee United last week through injury. And his hearts through and through. Blinker was caught in possession by Locke. Reset was fouled. He's Return from suspension tonight after missing the cup semi. Well, I have to say, I've been looking forward to this one for a couple of days now, and they really let us down. So much at stake tonight for either club, for different reasons, of course. Celtic back in the title race, Hearts battling against relegation, and the financial consequences of that really would be unthinkable for Jim Jeffries and Chris Robinson through here at Tynecastle. I think a real cracker in store tonight. A damn split by Recep, who's played in every position in his career, except goalkeeper. Stephen Presley will take this Hearts free kick. Very much Wigan. A while to get going as far as scoring goals are concerned for Hearts. But he certainly has got going with four in his last two. Anoni back in the Celtic setup. Now Viduka, he's away from McPherson here. Mark Viduka, oh, and it came off Ritchie and went behind for the corner. Now, once again, we see the body strength here. It's a long ball, and this is the option he gives Celtic. They can miss out the midfield and play it long to this man. Brushes aside Dave McPherson, who's one of the strongest in the business, and eventually squeezed out there at the front post by Paul Ritchie. But super play this early in the match from Mark Viduka. Viduka waits for Richie Blinker's corner. And a very decent corner, which is met by Reset. And Celtic have an early lead. Reset, who had to sit out Saturday's Cup semi, comes back with a bang. That's a super header, but it's criminal to lose a goal like this. Hearts of six or seven players inside that six-yard box. They lost a goal identical to this in the last match between the sides at Celtic Park. Resets up well, and he's very good in the air, but with so many players in that six-yard box, that is a terrible goal for Jim Jeffries' side to lose. Vidar reset with his third of the season, and I think I'm correct in saying that all three have been headers like that Dam and Reset now doing the business at the other end for Celtic Blinker well it's always lively when these two teams come head to head and that early Reset's goal has merely added a little extra spice to the occasion. Well, it's a super header from Vida Reset, but Dave McPherson, who's picking him up, hardly gets off the ground here. Puts him under no pressure whatsoever. And he couldn't believe his luck. tonight, Stuart Dougal is at Dunfermline on Saturday and then he heads off to Los Angeles Chicago and Kansas City to officiate in the American Soccer League won't be as good as Dunfermline though Burley McNamara here's Larson and that usually means bad news for opponents Larson finds Bernie! Fine effort. It just drifted over 
great example of how Larson links the play. The exchange with Blinker first of all to make the space. He knows exactly where Burley is, sets the chance up. And Burley can't quite get over it, but a great example of how well Larson links the play. It wasn't a bad effort at all. I don't want to worry Hearts, but Celtic haven't lost a league match this season in which they've scored first. They've won 14 and drawn four in fact, which is some record. Gary Lock, I think we could say he was getting stuck in to Tosh McKinley. Yeah, Gary Lock putting an early marker down, that'll be a fatal tussle out there. And they had a chance to clatter Tosh McKinley. He wasn't going to pass it up, was he? Down to Swiggin. Swiggin who has one of the highest squad numbers I've ever seen, 48. One of the best number 48s in Scotland. Cameron, whose return has made such a difference to Hearts. over the head of Boyd and McSwiggan. And Jonathan Gould <laughs> has sliced that one into the stands. A rare mistake from Celtics number one, who's kept three consecutive clean sheets. Lock. Boyd's clearance goes straight to Cameron. He finds Darren Jackson took an inflection off reset, I think, and it's oh, he's given the goal kick there, has it? Well, encouraging for Hearts. Cameron gets away from Blinker, and Jackson found a bit of space just on the edge of the box. And that's the problem Celtic will have tonight. That's a clearly a corner that came off via reset. But another warning there for Celtic that they have to get tighter on Darren Jackson. Watching Jim Jeffries on the touchline can be an evening's entertainment in itself. That was one of his calmer moments there. And Sweden is penalised now. Well, they're both at it here. So often we see the defender get the benefit of the doubt in those situations. Burley. Rose superbly to win the header, and now here's McNamara, a good block by Rob McKinnon. Good saving tackle by Rob McKinnon, caught with the ball inside him here, but he did well to recover, solid challenge. Just back from the loan spell at Hartlepool. Burley sent it back in, and Ferson sent it back out, here's McKinley. Gets it back from Blinker, Tosh McKinley, and here's Larson, and he sets it up for Blinker, and it's two for Celtic, and they have made a spectacular start at Tynecastle. That was a dream start for Celtic, and you see the generosity of Larson here, he's trying to dig it out from under his feet here, but he's always looking to for somebody else in a better scoring position. Blinker provided that. It was Blinker who put McKinley in, in the first place, the driven ball. Larson knows he can't score, sets it up for Blinker. And Gilles Rousset left helpless there. And exposed once again, it has to be said. And Celtic rampant. Well, we're going to have to sit down and figure out just how many goals Henrik Larson has set up for his colleagues this season, as well as the ones he scored. Fourth of the campaign, Reggie Blinker, Larson, with an unselfish assist. Hearts rocked in the opening minutes. Just as they thought they'd turn the corner as well after an impressive performance against Kilmarnock, first half certainly. And another good showing at Dundee United last week. We haven't even had 10 minutes, Celtic are two up, and they are looking ominous. Enrico Anoni, Orise, McKinnon.
McKinley. He had a big part to play in that goal as well. McKinley facing his former club, of course. Joined Celtic from Hearts some five years ago. And the free kick goes Celtic's way now. McKinley was floored by Locke. Paul Ritchie steered that back to Russo. The Hearts will be hoping they get a bit of time to settle down. Well, the first goal in particular in a terrible goal to lose this early in the match. It's bad enough when the opposition scores when they, they've worked hard to, to get the ball in the net, but when they don't have to work, and Celtic didn't for the first goal. It really is being over-generous. Bolton, though, to Stefan Adam. Now Gary Locke returns the compliment. Adam, did well to get the cross in for Twiggan. Celtic. Clear it away, Cameron conceding the throw. McPherson. Hearts just one point above the bottom club, Dunfermline. Behind Dundee United. Celtic, of course, hoping to close the gap on Rangers. They need Dunfermline to do them some sort of favour at Ibrox this evening. Burley, Anoni. Here's Larson. And he sets it up this time for Burnley, except that Ritchie intercepted. Fulton facing his former club. Now McSwiggan. And Dan is the only man in the middle at the moment. And it wasn't the best of pullbacks. In that there wasn't really anybody there. Marcel almost ends up in the crowd. Something strange happened, of course, uh, on Saturday in the Scottish Cup semi. Larson didn't score. A rare occurrence. Yeah, he's due a day off, isn't he? Okay. Remarkable performance throughout this season. And it's £650,000. What a piece of business. disastrous season for Hearts after they pushed the old firm almost all the way last season in the title race and won the Scottish Cup of course their first trophy for 36 years and now they find themselves embroiled in a fight for survival a tug from Jackson on Blinken who scored Celtic's first goal. And he was fouled by Jackson. Yeah, Dan Jackson, a fraction late there as Reset was prepared to step off the back into midfield. And he's good enough with the ball at his feet, via that Reset to step forward. Doesn't look out of place in that midfield area. And I think Joseph Venglos may just have found this man's best position, playing at the back. I think it's going to get a little warning from Stuart Google here. McKinley sends in such good crosses and Larson peeled away and was unmarked. And perhaps that should have been number 38, even if he was slightly off balance. Well, once again, he was given far too much room. He's in behind Paul Ritchie. Rob McKinnon should be tucking in here to get in the end of that. And no communication at all between the two of them. 
and Jim Jeffries must be shaking his head in that dugout Parts all over the place again at the back I think we'll see a good few more crosses like that coming in That tells its own story. A dream start for Celtic tonight. And they were anticipating a real hard slog here this evening. And it's far from over, but they couldn't have asked for a better start. Joe Benlos began the decade in Britain with Aston Villa and looks set to end it in Britain with Celtic after agreeing to stay on for next season. And now Paul Ritchie's going to get the first yellow card of the game. Well, he's had a couple on Larson. The problem is, if he, if he is going to go man-to-man -man for 90 minutes, if he's picked up the yellow card, he's already training on thin ice. Looking for Ritchie, a free kick for Celtic, and Noni takes it, met by McKinnon. Jackson. kick goes straight to Jackie McNamara. McKinnon, Fulton, he spent seven years with Celtic, looking to put McKinnon away, but Reset is alert to the danger. Yeah, the idea was right, just overcooked the pass, but once again, Reset, we saw his. Uh, Anticipation there, he was on top of the situation. And this young man's been a revelation since he stepped into the breach after the injuries to, to Mark Reuther and Alan Stubbs. He really has been superb. Cameron. Gary Lock won't quite get to that. in 16 games coming into tonight's match and they've won 13 of those 16 if they don't manage to catch up with Rangers how they will rue some dodgy results in the early part of this campaign and they might rue their away form as well they've only picked up four victories on the road 18 points in all away from home compared to 29 for Rangers. Fiduka. Blinker. Richie won the header. Knocked on by McKinnon. Away by a reset. down that side for Gary Lock. Anoni. McKinnon. Under pressure from Burley. In this four months of the season. With a niggling groin injury. Anoni Lambert to Burley and Larson ducks and here's Blinker and now Josh McKinley well, not only can he cross it rather well he's also got a bit of a shot on him yeah once again that was the Larson-Blinker partnership that set up the chance here Larson does enough to let it run through to Blinker and he set up Tosh McKinley much in the same way that Larson put him in for the goal. It's a good half chance there. Just couldn't get it on target. Fulton. And he finds a down. And that was back covering. Here's Burley. Three against three at the moment for Celtic. Burley looking for Larsson, another intelligent run from the Swedish international. Yeah, good crossover there between Baduka and Larsson. 
even though Hearts have a spare man at the back they're being pulled apart by the Celtic front pairing Tom Boyd who's a contender to Captain Scotland later this month in Germany now that Gary McAllister has retired from the international scene Paduka settles for the throw off Ritchie Anoni Fulton for Jackson who did well for a while Burnett leading another Celtic charge and look at the options available Reggie Blinker oh and Aruse just managed to get his giant palm to that another good break by Celtic if you look at Larson's movement here he takes his marker away to leave the space for Reggie Blinker Stephen Presley makes a decision to stay and pick Blinker up it's a good effort Aruse was scrambling across his goal McKinley sends in the corner Burley's header well Hearts is just not picking up anyone when it comes in in the air no they're just not attacking it well enough Bob McKinnon out jumped in and there's so many players in the box I'm not expecting to lose too many of them recently by signing a new contract as Larson has done for Celtic Paducah Richie read it Twiggin he's banged in double in his last two games and that's could do with a third brace McNamara Kinley. A free hitter for McPherson. Here's Jackson. A dam. Lock. from Locke and Hearts could be in trouble again here as Viduka looked to put Larson away oh, it should, have hit, pass. should have hit the space a great chance to put Larson in there all we had to do was knock it in behind Paul Ritchie Viduka Kimby gives it back to Viduka Helmut Swiggin possibilities perhaps for Hearts and Swiggin was obstructed by Orisa yeah, it's maybe worth giving it away as well because Hearts had plenty of support he certainly nudges him off the ball but it does give Celtic a chance to regroup to get back goal side the defenders move up front as Fulton prepares to send in the free kick for Hearts Gould with a very firm punch here's Cameron though drills it back in McKinnon and it comes to McSwiggan oh just wide from Gary McSwiggan well that couldn't have been much closer forcing a break of the ball here as it breaks to McSwiggan but he hit it well 
Boyd just a few inches wide of the target. Tom Boyd tries to close him down. And well enough struck shot. And Hearts need more of that right now. See the reset has taken a bad knock there as Jonathan Gould came for the corner. As he gets some magic spray, let me tell you about some more action coming your way. Friday at 7.30 on Sky Sports 3, it's Barnsley against already promoted Sunderland. They are hoping to complete the formality, surely, of the title in that game. And our Scottish offering on Sunday is Dundee against Rangers, that one being played at Tannadice. Sky Sports 3, 6 o'clock on Sunday. Rishep is OK, and that will be good news for Celtic. Here's Blinker. He's being fouled by Cameron. There's a bit of afters as far as the verbals go. Cameron's going to get a yellow card. They've got a warning not so long ago. Yeah, got a warning, it's not a great deal on this. A of pushing and pulling. So Cameron joins his teammate Paul Ritchie in the book. Lambert over the free kick. to Hart's relief, no doubt. Hart's actually topped the table back in August. They won five of their first six games in all competitions. And then it all went wrong. Horribly wrong. Cameron is away from Blinker. Yeah, better play from Colin Cameron. And this is what Hearts need more of. Pretty cynical challenge by Cole Burley, making a few complaints. Stefan Adam and Darren Jackson sizing this one up. Jonathan Gould sorting out his wall, which includes Gary McSwigan. As if they fancy a shot at goal, it takes something a bit special to beat goal from this range. Stefan Adam's effort took a deflection, and it was something special! And Hearts are back in this game! Well, they needed a break and they certainly got it there. That's just the kind of luck that Hearts need in their current situation. Wicked deflection. Completely deceiving Jonathan Gould. I think it's Tosh McKinley who comes in to try and charge the ball down. And it spins over Jonathan Gould. No blame attached to the Celtic goalkeeper, but the break that Hart so needed, they have. Game on. Jonathan Gould lets in a goal for the first time in four matches, but blameless really. Cruel deflection, some would say, but just a bit of fortune that Hearts might say they needed. McKinley, it would appear the ball came off. It's given the Hearts fans a big lift. Those fans were absolutely magnificent at Tannadice last week when Hearts beat Dundee United. Reset for Larson. Lambert. Larson. He's away from Ritchie. And not quite from Fulton, but it breaks for Blinker. And no flag here against Maduka. The flag. 
finish. It's seven goals in seven games for Mark Paducah and the time when officials are getting all sort of stick. Credit to the linesman for a good call then. from this situation it had it been up six inches higher it might have ended up the closest stump corner Blinker ready to take this corner into the danger zone it goes and that time first one on the header the header of Risa Blinker again hit by Lock Jackson has pulled away towards the touchline. Stevie Fulton. Rod McKinnon. Flicked on by McSwiggan. Dribble away for a goal kick. Well, it had to be a hopeful ball, nothing else into the box. Celtic had so many players goal side of the ball there. And Celtic's midfielder is doing a superb job in protecting that back three at times.
Here's Paduka. McPherson is down injured at the moment. And Southwick rather sportingly kick it out so he can get some treatment. It's a good night so far for Dr. Joe Venglos. Not so though for Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown. You could feel their sense of relief at Tannadice last week when they managed their first victory since beating Celtic here in December. But it looks like it might be back to square one. And this is why Dave McPherson is getting treatment at the moment. 50-50 with Henrik Larsson. He appears to overstretch there. And he wins the ball. You can see the pain in his face there. Ouch. Pass give the ball back to Celtic. And here's Vidal Risa. Aim towards Viduka. This time the flag goes up to ironic applause for the home fans. But as far as Viduka's goal is concerned, the announcement got it right. Yeah, it's a long ball. There are two of them offside there as it's played. And although the linesman is taking a bit of stick, he's certainly spot on at the mark of the Duca goal. Do you want to go down and tell the hearts like that? Davara. McPherson. Just had enough on it to carry back to Rousseau. McKinley, 34 now, almost certain to be on his way at the end of the season, but he's been Mr. Reliable when caught upon for Celtic in this campaign. Jonathan Gould is going to come, and he's going to collect. His kick goes straight down McPherson's throat, but a mistake. Almost proved rather costly. Still might in a roundabout sort of way. Here's McKinley. Lambert. McNamara. And players player of the year last season. Fair challenge from McKinnon though. Here's a dam. And he went the wrong side of McSwigan, but they'll try again. Very lock. No way past McKinley. Blinker releasing Larson. First and saw enough of it. And you can hear what the Hearts fans thought of that. Bolton. Put out by Anoni. Craig Burley. Larson, lovely touch to Blinker. Who looks to put Larson back in? Celtic so powerful when they surge forward. Hiduka. Ritchie is going to win that particular duel. A down. Fulton. Now oh, Viduka. We have two teammates to choose from, but the pass left Lambert stretching. Tom Boyd came to meet that. Jackson. Adam. Larson's going to step in here, but the free kick is given against him. Well, just as well, he was breaking into a good position there. Certainly used his body against his former teammate. And I think Stuart will go right to, to give the free kick. 
but appearances can be deceptive. Don't be fooled by the hairband. Henrik Larsen can look after himself. Presley away towards McKinnon. Fulton, McSwiggan, and it opens up a bit here for Gary McSwiggan! Spectacular shot, amazing save from Jonathan Gould. Yeah, great effort from Gary McSwiggan. As you're seeing, it does open up here for him. Turns inside onto his right side, finds a bit of space. That's a good effort and a fine save from Jonathan Gould. And get plenty behind that. Gould's right hand goes up quickly and he did enough. Gould now has to contend with Stevie Fulton's corner. Hearts hoping to claw their way back into the game again, but the whistle went for a bit of uh, shoving, I would presume. And Gould is certainly hurt. It's Gary McSween, I think, that's... In fact, it's Darren Jackson who's in in front of Jonathan Gould there, and he does fall awkwardly. It's a good corner. I'm going to put a goalkeeper under pressure, drop it in there. A little bit of treatment for the Celtic keeper who was in fine form last season as he won the title with Darren Jackson, of course, at Celtic. I think he dominates his area better than he, he did when he arrived at the club. I think if he did have a weakness, it was from cross balls. He was reluctant to come, far more willing to come. And more willing to punch as well. Doesn't try to, to hold everything that comes into his box. A bit like Andy Gorham, quite happy to get the fist on it. And it's working well for him. Well, Gord is uh, on his feet. In fact, I don't think he's going to be able to carry on. And that's going to mean a big, big moment for young Barry John Court. Gould obviously has a problem which cannot be rectified. There's so many players in the area. Darren Jackson's in front of him at the moment. Gould can't get to it. Comes under pressure from Paul Ritchie. He seemed to be holding the shoulder on his way down. It may have been the contact with Paul Ritchie that caused the problem. Jonathan Gould having to go off then. And... <laughs> might be a few nerves in the body of this young man at the moment. 18 years of age. Barry John Court is called upon the rule this season, of course. They have to have 221 players on the bench, and that's why he's been on the bench a fair bit. In preference to Stuart Kerr, he's come on. I think sometimes you're better going in at the deep end. We've come here tonight not expecting to, to be playing. Certainly wouldn't have any time to get nervous about it. And Celtic supporters behind that goal giving him a fine reception there, but a big night as you see. A lot of football left in this game. Well, he looks pretty confident. Didn't take him long to get his first touch either. McKinnon. Larson, Celtic threatening again with their main man Henrik Larson, who seemed to be going down a cul de sac that time. Burley, away by McPherson, but only to Paul Lambert. Now Blinker. Blinker ran into Presley. Far more effective player, Reggie Blinken, now that he's taken a step in from the wide position. Not under pressure now to go past defenders, and he's linking up well, particularly with Larson. Half time, fast approaching. Celtic free kick. And there was a little nudge on Blinker then. 
the referee is going to take action. Well, there's a sandwich between Colin Cameron and Darren Jackson. On the yellow. Third Hearts player to be booked in this first half, along with Paul Ritchie and Colin Cameron. Jackson fired up against his former teammates. There'll be four minutes of added on time in this first half. Celtic have had to replace their keeper. McKinley over his own goal by Ritchie. Super ball in from Tosh McKinley into exactly the right area. He said they'd gone front post and Paul Ritchie does well here. Blinker's corner. Hearts haven't looked too comfortable. When these have been swung in, that one was met by Fulton at the near post, though. Jackson. McKinnon. Cameron. And gets the throw. effectively rules him out for the run-in. Right, oh, that's a precise pass for Cameron! And Barry John Court becomes an instant hero with the Celtic fans. Well, it's the first time that Colin Cameron has found a bit of space beyond the front two. Great run to the back post as he peels off here. Lambert can't get there. And eventually does manage to make the block. Good ball in from McSwegan. And Lambert does well to get back there and make the block. Getting Barry John Corr out of jail. Four corner from a dam, but here's Rob McKinnon. And he's set that's going to come to a dam. And a dam's cross has caused chaos for Celtic. I'm sure Rob McKinnon will say, I meant to pass it to him all the time. It's the first time in the match Celtic have looked ragged at the back and that's clearly intent to put this young goalkeeper under as much pressure as they can before half-time. He has yet to make a save then. Thanks to Lambert's interception. And he might be forced to make one here. Jackson, away by Viduka, Larson and McKinnon chasing, oh Larson's got away from McKinnon here and only Lock is back and he's got past him too and now here's Burnley, oh and Russe with what could yet be a vital save for Celtic but hang on, and now Burnley the flag is up this time, well what a sequence that was, well once again it's Larson at his very best to set up the first chance, and here come Hearts. And Hearts are going to get a free kick for the foul on Presley. And it's going to be the first Celtic yellow card. And it's it for Boyd. 
uh, Presley full steam ahead there down the right hand side Tom Boyd well late in the tackle four goals and four yellow cards just your average Hearts v Celtic match Fulton's free kick flicked on by a dam and the free kick has been given John, Barry John caught. He's on his own here. Must have been off the ball. Stuart Dougal up as he spotted it. Well, we've now played five and a half minutes of first half injury time. Mainly because Jonathan Gould had to go off with a likely dislocated elbow. It is half time now though. Celtic made a stunning start with goals in the opening few minutes from Vidal Risa and from Reggie Flinker. Hearts hopes were revived by Stefan Adam, but only briefly really, because Celtic stormed back and got another one through Mark Viduka. Celtic glitched Hearts from the opening whistle. Poor defending, but Vidal Risa wasn't too bothered about it. And then Larson unselfishly set up Flinker for an unstoppable blast. Stefan Adams free kick deflected and looped off Tosh McKinley and over Gould. But then Viduka definitely onside produced another fine finish. It's been an exciting and entertaining first half. At the break at Tynecastle, Hearts 1, Celtic 3. It is a cracker between Hearts and Celtic, and at halftime, it is 3-1 to Celtic. Charlie, Jonathan Gould off because of a shoulder problem. Barry yep. John Corr, as we saw, the young goalkeeper coming on. And obviously, Hearts fancy an aerial bombardment off him because the tallest player in the country, Kevin James, six foot seven, yep. he's on for Hearts. That'll be the case. No surprise there. I think it will be aerial things. The kid did look a bit nervous, Barry John Corr. But I think he's a, he's a tough time to think about it. Davey says sometimes it's OK when you get thrown in a deep end. It's a tough time to think about it now. But I think he'll be OK. He'll be strong enough. But Hearts will bombard them. This game is not over, Jim. OK, let's rejoin David Proven and Ian Crocker. Thank you, Jim. Celtic will start the second half. And as the boys are saying, they've had to make a change in goal. Hearts bringing on Kevin James, who, like Kevin Francis of Oxford, Six foot seven. You don't suppose he might go up for corners and set pieces by any chance? Well, they might ask a few questions of this young Celtic goalkeeper. And this is when he'll need some protection from the men in front of him. Celtic hoping to extend their unbeaten run to 17 matches. Unbeaten indeed since they lost here at Tyne Castle in December. At the moment, they would appear to be exacting revenge for that defeat. Reggie Blinker. Larson. Burley. McNamara. Burley's cross. Cameron had to knock it behind for the corner. Yeah, it's a good run from Larson. He takes Presley to the front post, hoping for somebody to come in behind him. Reggie Blinker doesn't get there. Good movement again, though, from Celtic. Cameron has to take pain for this. A couple of days before the game. Because of the penalty problem that's kept him out all season. The sweet left foot of McKinley. Sent it in, and Kevin James... Six foot seven met it back in by McKinley though, and it's just off target from Burley. Well, he delivers a good ball, Tosh McKinley, whipped away from the goalkeeper. Burley's up well, starting to look more like himself. I think he'll need a good pre-season regime 
before we see the very best of him after having been out for four months. But uh, he's starting to get some of that old sharpness back. Here's Adam and he's onside! Stefan Adam! Right at the start of the second half gives Hearts renewed hope. An absolute determination here from Adam. He's under pressure from Tom Boyd here as the ball's played in. Question mark as to whether he's offside or not. Didn't look for the flag, didn't wait for the whistle. Under pressure from Boyd, and that's a fine effort under pressure from the Frenchman. I know he's appealing for offside. And Hart's right back in the game. Well, he scored both goals against Celtic here in that victory in December. Another double tonight, albeit the first one with the help of a deflection. Need a deflection that time. Kinley's rather Morris free kick. Larson, well, after Hart scored their first goal, Celtic kicked back straight away. What he said, sends it over the top. I think that'll be a goal kick. Stefan Adam was saying today he needs to get more goals. Well, here's the goal. And as it's played, well, it's very, very tight. Almost impossible for the linesman to call that one. And Adam did the right thing. Played to the whistle and asked questions later. Kevin James, not surprisingly, has moved forward. And Fulton's free kick is aimed towards him. And it was actually... Not by Presley in the end, pushed away by Risa. Well, it's game on now, isn't it? Listen to this, Hearts support react after that second goal. And Celtic can expect a torrid time for the next five minutes or so. Gary Locke's long throw. Oh, it's bobbling here for Presley and Adam. And now McSwiggan hit Imoni. Gary Locke, and it's a corner. What a contest. Yeah, they're right back in it, and they know it. It's a throw, in fact. Can't quite go for the corner. Locke to James at the near post. Barry John Court was impeded. There's under pressure from Stephen Presley as it's played in. And only looking for the young keeper to come for it, resets in between them. And I think he's fortunate to, to get a decision there, Barry John Court. I think he's impeded as much by reset as Presley. Gives Celtic a welcome opportunity to get pushed up to the halfway line. A nervous night for the 18 year old. He's been on the bench several times this season. Fulton's header. Reset taking no chances. Lambert. Oh, reset for the shocking error. Adam, now McSwiggan. And Blinker halted the Hearts charge then. Here he is again. Here's Tosh McKinley. It's Paduka! His second of the game! And the Wizard of Oz puts Celtic 4-2 up. What a delivery from Tosh McKinley here. I thought he was going to play it early, decided to take a touch. Larson's back post. He thinks they're in there for Paduka. The measured ball into the front post. Paducah gets the reward, but what a cross this is from Tosh McKinley to pick him out. Looks up and says, help yourself. What a game of football. Inside Hearts, get back into it, Celtic go and score again. They never let us down, these two teams, though. 
entertainment guarantee. And this is entertainment of the highest order. And he said, Marshall, that one behind, and Gary Locke had a little kick at him. And will be summoned to Stuart Dougal. Reset going to usher it out of play and it's frustrating for the forward player here. And the last thing Gary Locke needs is a yellow card as he gets it. Number four of the night for Hearts. I think it had been coming really for Gary Locke tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this is a smashing goal. McKinley needs options here and he gets it, last into the back post. And the timing of Viduka's run under pressure from Kevin James and it's a very, very fine finish as well under pressure. Locke crashed in to win the header. Adam couldn't quite keep it in play. Celtic have now scored 76 goals in the Scottish Premier League. That's the highest tally. Their yeah, best ever goal season since the Scottish League was reconstructed in the 70s. It is 90, which they managed a couple of times in the 80s. Well, this is just what the good doctor ordered. Although so this might not be. McSwiggan. It's behind reset, but nobody else in the box apart from Adam. Boyd now powering forward. Neatly done by Presley. Darren Jackson. McSwiggan. Through to offside against Adam. Yeah, Tosh McKinley did well to step up here. Otherwise he would have been on side. This is about to be played. McKinley, well, he's, he's level. Tosh McKinley, in fact, a fraction late. You see the arm going up, but Adam was level. Solid service as a player. He's taken them to three cup finals. He's taking over as manager. It's rip roaring stuff at Tynecastle. Oh. James knocked that into touch. Anoni with the throw, Viduka on a hat trick, of course. And reset was there once again. Yeah, he's had a fine match. And a lot of important saving tackles, and he's always been prepared to break forward into the midfield as well. You might be remembered by Luton Town fans. With a Brief spell with them a few seasons back. McKinnon towards McSwiggan. Here's Cameron. And Hearts respond again. Nice work from McNamara. And shaking off McKinnon. Here's Fulton. It's a pitch of a pass though to McKinnon. And now here's McSwiggan. Exactly what the young keeper needed. It's a stinging shot here from Gary McSwigan. Good ball inside from Rob McKinnon. And he hits this well. And he didn't just block it, he also caught it as well. No spillage. And that's exactly what Barry John Corr needed. McSwigan, a rare bit of space he finds there on the edge of the box. That's a good effort and a good save. That'll give a big boost. Just 18 years of age. A replacement for Jonathan Gould. It looks like a bit of a, an episode of casualty at the moment out there because Celtic have two men down, Recep and I think McNamara. It's been pretty bruising from the word go. But 
both are getting treatment on Friday in the Nationwide League. We're off to Oakwell for Barnsley against Sunderland. What a week they're having. Having pinched promotion, the title is the next target. And on Sunday, it's Dundee against Rangers. Points precious for both teams for different reasons. Sky Sports 3, 6 o'clock on Sunday. Now, Celtic having already lost Jonathan Gould, might be about to lose Vidal Risa. Yeah, it looks as if Brian Scott is cleaning his eye up there. It was down awkwardly there as Gary McSwigan gets the shot in. Brian Scott appears to be treating his, his face or his forehead. Collision between the two Celtic men by the look of it. And Morton Vicorst. Well, Reset now has brushed away the offer of a stretcher. Yeah, I think he's taken a cut to his forehead there. The Vaselino stem the bleeding. It's a welcome sight for Joseph Wenglos, this man back in his feet. Becoming an integral part of the Celtic side. Certainly no contact here as he goes down. McSwigan wrong footed him. Difficult to see how he picked up the injury. Tomorrow's up as well. It's a Friday, seemingly with the reset. Norton Vigors, I think, will put his jacket back on for the time being. The Danish international has missed most of this season through injury, just come back. McKinnon's header, reset. The Vaseline a bit of a test as it tries to stem the flow of blood to no avail. Reset is there to mop up. Jackson to lock. McSwiggan. Reacted quickly as the ball was played in. Quite happy to take the physical challenge from Stefan Adam as well. Lambert. Brinker. Reggie Brinker. First drive. Patted down by Rusek. Well, he was winding up for us. Things opened up in front of him. Allowed to take it forward for 10 15 yards. It's a good effort. If anything, hit it too well. Straight out, Joe Lucy. That was an excellent challenge by Locke, but he may well have caught Blinkers stopped as he went in for it. He's still down, and Celtic are going in search of a stiff, and they might get it here with Burley. And now, Baduka, who's on a hat trick. Burley again. Blocked by Richie. Because Gary Locke is still down injured. The play will be stopped now, in fact. Well, Stuart Dougal has his work cut out now. It's been fiercely contested, but it's starting to boil over a bit now. And Gary Locke far from happy at this challenge from Reggie Blinker. And he certainly showed the studs there, there's no doubt about that. It's a bad challenge. Gary Locke has hardly moved. Scraped by the studs of Reggie Blinker. Um, the stretcher coming on for him. That will present Jim Jeffries and Billy Brown with another problem. They've not really given him much treatment on the spot either. 
Now Reggie Blinker's second favourite here as the, the ball breaks, but not fully committed. And Reggie Blinker shows the studs. It's a bad tackle. Well, Hearts are going to have to bring on Grant Murray, who actually is a very suitable replacement. He filled the role that Locke is playing at Dundee United last week when Locke was injured. He is a player who has had some agonising injuries in his time. Missed the cup final last season, Gary Locke. Grant Murray coming on. This is a sorry sight. Well, especially to this man who's had to contend with a couple of very serious knee injuries already in his career. He's battled his way back. We hope this isn't too serious. There, he gives his all for hearts as well. Gary Locke, replaced by Grant Murray. In the meantime, Celtic have a free kick because the ball didn't actually go out of play. We won't be able to take it yet because Gary Locke is still getting stretched off. To huge applause from the Hearts fans. Sent it in, and Russe is going to eventually pluck that one out of the air. Anoni's underneath that. Here's Burley. Larson. Still Larson who hasn't got on the score sheet yet, even though Celtic have got four goals. He's played his part in a couple of them, mind you. On by McSwiggan, but Reset was there. Grant Murray's head up, finds a dam. Now Cameron, that's asking a lot of a dam. And Blinker getting the treatment from the Hearts fans after that tackle which saw Gary Locke stretch it off. Yeah, it turns out of the situation well here, Reggie Blinker under pressure from Stefan Adam and wins the, the goal kick. They're very fortunate, I think, not to get at least a yellow card for the, the challenge in Gary Locke. Well, there's little doubt what the Hearts fans think about it all. Swigan came off the legs of Anoni. Here's Adam. Bolton. Grant Murray. He hooked it back well. And Cameron on the half volley. Scooped it over. Well, they timed the run to perfection into the box. Good ball in from Grant Murray. Where Cameron's getting his energy from, I don't know. It must be well short of full fitness. Maybe a bit of tiredness in the way he tried to get the shot on target. Catching up as far as attempts at goal are concerned. Fulton felt the force of that challenge. Well, it's Budley and Fulton head to head. It's been a bruising contest. Dougal, saying before the match that uh, he knew what to expect, really. Blood and Thunder battle. And Paul Ritchie, 
shove that behind for a goal kick. Paduka with eight goals in the seven games for Celtic. Took him a while to get hit, but he's made quite an impact. The outstanding reset. Here's that one. Burley. Kevin James. Murray. That'll be collected by Boyd. Helped on by McKinley to Reggie Blinker. McKinley. Into the danger zone it goes. Reggie Blinker. McNamara arriving. Away by Kevin James. Yeah, Hearts is starting to look a bit stretched at the back. Jackie McNamara. Bob McKinnon for company. And eight runs from Darren Jackson. On Lambert, I think. Jackson, one of the four Hearts players, has already been booked. Yeah, I think it's a legitimate attempt to play the ball, but catches Paul Lambert it's actually the weight of the body uh, as Darren Jackson follows through here that catches Paul Lambert's right ankle is he like for the physios <laughs> I'm sure Craig Brown the Scotland manager is enjoying this encounter he'll take a squad to Bremen at the end of the month for a friendly match against Germany and we'll be there for that one Lambert staggers to his feet there well, certainly will be a few bruises to inspect in the morning on well, most of these players McSwiggan looking for Cameron Harmlessly through to Harry John Court. A lot of teams in the Scottish Premier League this season have put their rookie keepers on the bench because they have to include two players under the age of 21. Viduka. Oh, and that took a wicked deflection as Lambert let go. Yeah, as you'll see, almost wrong footed here. Kevin James caught in possession. Paducah sets up Larson. And almost caught Joe Rousseau out. Oh, this is going to come through to Darren Jackson against his former club. Magnificent from Core. There's Jackson. Maybe even Dali. And they might be punished here by Henrik Larson in the middle. escapes him he was at full stretch mind you oh you to put your house on him there once again Larson so unselfish look at the ground Viduka makes up holding off Presley I don't know how you explain that after the, the two goals he scored tonight how he missed that I don't know Henrik Larson Gets another chance. That wouldn't be Reggie Blinker on the ball by any chance, would it? Here's McKinley. And Grant Murray's challenge will result in a free kick. Yeah, it's another late challenge. We've seen a few of them tonight. On a busy night for referee Stuart Dougal. McKinley sent the free kick in very quickly. Hearts cleared ranks. And it'll be a corner. McKinley, a former Hearts player. And as we've seen plenty of times tonight, this man can send a decent delivery in. to nothing, Burley's header
Well, this was good goalkeeping by Barry John Caw. Decides to come quickly and charge the ball down here. Darren Jackson should have hit it earlier, perhaps, but good goalkeeping by the youngster. Lambert. Anoni. McNamara is getting back to his best after a nightmare time with injuries. McNamara again. Fulton shut up shot. McKinnon. Try to put Burley in. Here's Presley now. Murray. Towards Cameron. On to Jackson. And so McKinnon a little short. Jackson to Cameron this time. Way by Boyd. The Duke are on to Larson. and Viduka are proving to be a frightening prospect it's tucked through towards Viduka but Rousseau did well wonderful play from Larson held it up and held it up until Viduka made the run he knows Viduka's round the outside here he's waiting for him to get in behind Paul Ritchie slips it through and Gilles Rousseau did well Larson It's going to drift harmlessly through to Rousseau. As we head towards the final quarter of an hour, there'll be a bit of injury time as well. Probably about another 90 minutes the way it's gone tonight. Larson and Freshly trying to fend him off. And he did. But is that a back pass? No, besides the referee. McKinnon. It's off and only for a half throw. We've got to go for it now. Trailing 4 2. Jackson. Firm header from Annoni. Early finding Blinker. Hans are going to bring on the Frenchman Vincent Garan shortly. Here's the Dutchman. Blinker looking for Baduka. Kevin James muscled him out of it. As perhaps only Kevin James could have, really. Well, the Celtic supporters behind the goal felt this was a deliberate pass, but a difficult one to call. Pass is going to take off Rob McKinnon and Vincent Guerin, who played in Euro '96 for France, comes on to try and create a few things for Hearts in the closing stages. Namara, now Burley advancing. In the early centre. Cut out by Presley. Paducah. Larson, they're queuing up here. Burley! Patted away by Russo. Well, everybody's getting stuck in. And Blinker finds McKinley. Great to watch. Fulton. Oh, Stephen, come on! Oh. Probably becoming more of an influence in this match as hearts begin to tire. And he does pace himself well, Greg Bully. I did suggest he was 
still a bit short of fitness. Reset is in the walls again now. And he really has hurt his back there. And that is really nasty. As he fell over the top of Darren Jackson, almost like he was in spasm then. been in the wash tonight via that reset and he's up and he goes over the shoulder there of Darren Jackson it's a bad fall a little unintentional but it's a bad bad landing there for via that reset as he comes down looks like he's ready to get up again well, that's just good to see that he's okay Ian. to check the reset was okay. It's typical of the sort of guy he is, mind you. Well, I wonder what's going to happen to him next. <laughs> That's all right, and a bad back so far. Fulton's cross. Easy for Henry Jean Court. It's going to fall for McKinley. Here's for Duca. Oh, and it came off Larson's knee. Well, no, Butler wanted it square. Butler had made another good run there. He's just decided to bomb forward at every opportunity now. Paul Lambert is going to sit in for him. Celtic's seventh corner and the visiting fans paying homage to Reggie Blinker as he made his way across. In not quite the same way that the home fans treated him. Away by James. to stop it from going behind for the goal kick. Yeah, just asking a bit too much of Jackie McNamara there with the reverse pass. But he does look a different player, Reggie Blinker, now that he's made the shift in from wide left. Far more involved in the game, he has more options, linking up well with Larson. And Celtic members still have Lubo Morace to come back from injury. Adam spinning away from reset that time. Geran and here's Mitch Swiggin. That was a nice try. It's a goal kick. Well, didn't well to get the shot in at all. So many bodies around him there. Goes down by three Celtic defenders. Shot well wide, but good determination there from Gary McSwiggin. And Hearts need a goal now if they take it back into this game they really do need one quickly Richie's header will drop for McNamara Larson McNamara Viduka Blinka Kick. Yeah, a little trip here by Henrik Larsson as for which he takes the ball away. Good spot by Stuart Dougal. This kick 
by Reset. Murray. Adam. Here's Cameron. And Hart set up a grandstand finish. Kevin James's header. Collected by Four. You can remember this night, that's for sure. Well, Hearts have pushed Kevin James forward. No real choice now, starting to run out of time. And it might not be pretty the long ball into the box, but when you have a man of six foot seven and is capable of winning it as Kevin James, then why not? Shot by Richie on Viduka has given Dr. Joe Venglos his side a free kick. Reset has moved forward, a goal would have a memorable night for him. It's not going to happen in that free kick, but... Hearts were last relegated at the start of the 1980s. Spent a couple of years outside of the top flight. They'll be hoping they can secure their top flight status. You look through their squad and you think they would have enough to do that. But then that has been thought of a few clubs in the past. Geraint's pass finding Fulton. His cross helped on by Kevin James. Blinker. Be a few gaps to the back as Hunts go in search of a goal themselves. It's Presley though. Fulton. Oh, he's miscued that one completely. Yeah, it looked a tired pass. And given the pace that uh, this game has been played on, that was surprising. Put out by Cameron. Up in the air from Lambert though. Burley. Here's Blinker, Larson has peeled away on the far post, it's aimed towards him, it won't quite reach him, but it will be a corner, Richie having descended behind again. Yeah, he takes up superb position at times, Larson, peels off to the back here, it wasn't a bad ball at all by Reggie Blinker, and Richie had no choice but to head behind. Something fans, cheering Blinker once again, as he makes his way across to take this corner. Goes short to McNamara. Whipped in by Blinker. Presley's clearance. Celtic's throw. Crossfire there between the two of them. Pushes the ball out of play. Colin Cameron left his business card there. Chester Boyd, Jackie McNamara, he was a little fortunate then, he was making the most of it, Richie was well in, Fulton, Q 
you, Dallas, having to calm down Jim Jeffries. A few uh, fourth officials have tried to do that this season. Picked on by Adam. And he's on the hat trick here. Excellent stop. Well, it would have been some final few minutes if that had gone in. They will plug away though, Hearts. Four centre by Fulton. And they might be made to pay for it. Offside against Viduka. Man of the match time, Davy. Well, the man we're looking at right now, Ian. Marco Viduka, and I hope he doesn't mind me calling him Marco. Can't quite get used to the mark, but he's linked up superbly well with Larson. His movement has been first class. And the finishing for the two goals was exceptional. He's my Bank of Scotland man of the match. Adam. Twisting and turning and tormenting Boyd. And he's got his cross in. Cross of some sort. moving in for the kill here. Henrik Larsson. They have to poke it behind for a corner. Well, once again, the link up well. Larsson and link up. Subtle ball in there behind for, for Blinker, but he was squeezed out again by Paul Ritchie. Something quite happy, though, just to play out the game in the heart's half. corner drifted out of play it's that first poor century kind of uh, put in there tonight yeah, he's regarded as the best crosser of the ball at, at Celtic Park that is Tosh McKinley I think he's demonstrated why tonight some first class service into that box Jackson up to McSwiggan McSwiggan got his cross in and eventually its way through to Barry Jean Paul. Yeah, Dam's always busy in that penalty area though. And only looks over his shoulder and he's too late because the Dam's in behind him and Paul Lambert does enough to put him off. Exceptional. And if you're a young front player looking on tonight, this has been a bit of an education, the movement of the Celtic front pairing. Brinker with the corner. Recess header. Oh, he deserves something out of tonight as well. He's been superb. Yeah, he would have done well to beat Jules Rousset from that angle. Duke, hoping for a hat-trick perhaps, 
And he has it! No, he doesn't. Just wide. It's a great exchange between Baduka and Larson again. Watch this for a layoff by Larson here. It's open a bit of space for Baduka. Richie closed it down quickly, but great understanding again by the two of them. There's so much promise in this front pairing. They haven't been working together very long, but it augurs well for what's remaining of this season and certainly for next season. With four minutes of added on time, Hearts are running out of time. And here's McSwiggin trying to bundle it in. And the green and white wall went up then. And Barry John Court is in the thick of it. Danny McSwiggin just couldn't find the space here. It's Tom Boyd who's right behind him, putting him under pressure. to the night for Celtic possible dislocated shoulder for Jonathan Gould he's been taken to hospital Garan too much on it for a dam Joe Vengos and he really does know his football vastly experienced and a gentleman too the drawing board really for Jim Jeffries and Hearts but they've shown him enough I'm sure in the past few games to suggest they can get out of trouble it's all over Celtic's arms are raised as Dr Joe and his team go 17 matches unbeaten Vidar Reset got their first goal and it was outstanding at the back Richie Blinker made it 2-0 that was inside the opening 10 minutes. Marco Viduca with a double. Confirm his status as a hero already with these Celtic fans. They keep the pressure on Rangers. But credit to both teams for putting on an exceptional show for us here tonight. Full marking, allowing... Vidal Recep in early on and then Larson unselfishly sets up Reggie Blinker and he didn't mess around at all Stefan Adams free kick looped off Tosh McKinley and in over Jonathan Gould who had to go off injured Celtic though responded again with another goal fine finish from Viduka who was onside back came Hearts with Adam scoring his second of the game he likes scoring against Celtic but then a double for Viduka too it took Celtic 10 years to win the title it's very clear they are not going to give it up without one heck of a fight full time score at Tyne Castle Hearts 2, Celtic 4 Mark, man of the match, once again, congratulations. It was a cracking game, but the bottom line is Celtic have got three points. You must be happy with tonight's work, are you? Yeah, I mean, uh, our aim today was to, to win the game, of course, and um, uh, I think the boys played really well from the start. Um, you know, it was easier once we got a couple of early goals, and, um, you know, full credit to to, uh, to Hearts. They battled the whole, the whole game, and, um, you know, I'm just happy that, that we won.
Did you expect as much of a battle as that? Uh, no. I, uh, well, we always know it's, it's a hard game coming to uh, coming to Hearts, but um, I think that um, we, we handle, handled it all right, and I thought we, we had a good game. Tom, presumably it's as physical a game as you've played in a while as well. But if you cut some bruises tomorrow, won't they? Yeah, you don't expect anything else when you come through to Tynecastle. Uh, we uh, had to bot for this game. We know that we've got to win every game between now and the end of the season. We've done my bit tonight, and we just got to continue uh, getting victories now. You scored four. Are you going to be happy with that? Should it be more given the run of play? Possibly, yeah. But we'll not be happy at losing two. You know, that's a disappointing factor for us. Uh, but you know, as you say, the, the boys up the front uh, done their job today. They scored four goals. Could have had more. And uh, but I think it was a, a great game for you. Hearts will be cursing you tonight, Mark. No sooner did they get themselves back in the game, but you scamper back up the pitch and put it beyond them again. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was good. Uh, we, we, as soon as they scored, we scored another goal, so that sort of killed them off a little bit. And um, I'm just grateful and happy that we that we won the game. Tom, you're only just off the pitch. Now let me tell you, Rangers uh, beat on Fermley 1-0 tonight. I guess you just write that off and ignore it, though, do you, and carry on with your own business? Yeah, we've just got to keep winning games. You know, obviously we're hoping that Rangers will slip up somewhere, but uh, if they don't, then we'll just uh, we'll try our best anyway. All that remains now is you to present this gentleman here with another bottle of champagne to add to his growing collection. Well, good luck. Thanks Thank very you. much. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys. Cheers.